Hey guys, welcome back to another episode here on the realm. And we are over here doing a little bit more work on the witch farm. So I'm working on the drop chamber. Currently putting in a bunch of hoppers down at the bottom here to collect all their drops once they fall down here. And then after this, I need to put the roof on the farm. I think that I'm going to use dark prismarine as the roof and I think that I'm gonna use dark prismarine slabs on the top of these uh, on these hoppers as well I think that it's gonna look pretty good next to this uh, gray concrete and the black glass I don't know we'll just have to see but that is the current plan at least so to get enough dark prismarine I'm gonna have to go over to the guardian farm so this is a good opportunity for me to show you guys that build I've done that a little while back, and it's one that I'm really proud of. It took me a long time to do, similar to the, this one here. And I like to do big projects like this in Minecraft. Um, so what I'm going to do is make my way over there, and I will cut back in whenever I'm just about there. We are here at the portal for the Guardian Farm, and it's just a short travel from my base in the Nether. And for this, I'm actually going to put on some shaders to show this off. I usually don't play with shaders on, but I'll throw them on occasionally to get a good look at things. It can really make builds pop. So I'm going to go ahead and head on in here and show you guys the guardian farm that I built. Okay, we are here at the farm. And you can see these guys just rain down. They spawn over in these tanks. Three to half a dozen at a time. They're funneled into the drop chamber. And they go down where they die and their items are collected. Let's get away from this portal. It's, uh, it's a little noisy. Okay, so this is the original base of the Ocean Monument. And the ocean monument was found using an ocean explorer map that I bought from a cartographer at the village that I base at. And this design was made by Iskol85. I think it was designed by him as well. And uh, he used it in Hermitcraft Season 6 to make a guardian farm in, uh, by his base. And I really liked the design of this. It was much different than any other guardian farm that I've ever seen. I thought it looks really cool and impressive. So the way that this was done is that the first step was, of course, defeating the Elder Guardians and draining the ocean, the ocean Monument itself, removing all those blocks all the way down to the base here. And then I made a cube of glass all the way around that, drained that all of its water using sand and sponges. This was a project that took probably a couple months from start to finish. Uh, I was working on other projects, and I took a break from the realm for a couple weeks during that, so it wasn't straight, but it, it, was a, it was quite a bit of work. Making a guardian farm is one of the biggest projects that you can do in this game, but whenever you do it and you're done, you can see how cool and satisfying it actually is. This is the first guardian farm that I've made on Java, and, uh, and I had a lot of fun making it. I challenge you guys to try to make one of these in your world. So, once the, uh, the, the area was all drained of its water, made these tanks, where within the bounding box of the ocean monument are the only places that these guardians can spawn. They can't spawn out there at all. So by making these tanks filled with water, this is the only area that these guys can spawn. And there's no mobs that can spawn anywhere else here. A lot of people don't know that. But in the bounding box of an ocean monument, no regular mobs can spawn in here. You can see that it's quite dark here. Plenty dark enough to, to spawn regular mobs. But uh, creepers, skeletons, zombies, nothing else can spawn in the bounding box of this. So this makes this farm just super, super efficient. I'm going to go ahead and sleep here real quick. Yeah, so this build took quite a while. I had a blast making it. And I'm still adding some little things here and there. 
You can see that I'm adding some coral around the outside. So it kind of gives a cool effect whenever you're standing in here. At some point I'll come back and continue that all the way around the outside here. Maybe add some more stuff to the inside. I thought about making a large kelp farm or something like that over here. I think that I've changed my mind on that. And if I do make one, I'm going to make it over at the witch farm site where I've got so much room. But anyway, let's go ahead and head on down to the collection area. You can see that I have a uh, guardian pixel art here where you go down the eye to get to the collection area. Okay, right down there is the collection area. You see we have a conduit down here. So we have water breathing in this whole area as well. And here they are. You can see that they just drop right down. And this is exactly what I want to do at the witch farm, where I just have them do a fatal fall. They drop down onto slabs, half slabs, and hoppers can pull items through slabs. So it's just hopper down into storage chests. And then I can manually move it over and make blocks out of it. You can see I've got my beacon down there. I always love to have those. I'll show you how good this uh, output is. Provides all of the prismarine shards and crystals that we could ever need. For sea lanterns, different kinds of prismarine. Go ahead and... We need the shards is what we need for dark prismarine. We already have some over here. Got some sea lanterns, other prismarine, and then I've got a bunch of shards and crystals already stored up over here. Also have a bunch of ink that I've brought over here. Craft dark prismarine. Let's go ahead and drop some of this for now. And craft some up. Yeah, you can see that every block takes one piece of black dye. It's These things are really expensive to make, actually. It's a beautiful block, though. I really like the, the texture of this block. Okay, so I'm just going to take this prismarine here and make it into slabs. Drop off this stuff. Don't need the fish. Okay, here we go. Wondering how much I'm going to need over there. Quite a bit, I think. The roofs that go over these farms to keep them nice and dark are pretty, pretty big. Take that for now. I think that that will give us plenty. I think that'll be enough to get the job done. Okay. Well, I am going to head out of this place. Head back up top. Got what I came for. Head back over to the witch farm. And I will cut back in once I get over there. Okay, so we are back over here at the witch farm. And you can see I've already put some of the dark prismarine slabs down here over the hoppers. I think that it goes pretty well with that gray concrete and the black glass. I just need to glass up the front here. I'll end up doing that after the roof probably. I've also started putting some dark prismarine slabs down on the roof itself. Actually had to go back over to the guardian farm once I got over here. I realized I didn't grab any dark prismarine stairs, which I need around the edges here. Need to bring the level of the roof down a little bit. I'm gonna do three rows of stairs down. Give a little bit of a hood. So this area is completely dark all the time. Bringing the light level down to zero. So the whole time that we're in this area, working on different builds, it'll be spawning witches and collecting their drops. So after this, there should be a good number of witches spawning. So that means by the end of this video, 
we should see this farm fully operational and see what kind of rates we're going to get. I'm pretty excited. This has been a long time coming. And this farm is coming right at the right time, too, because we are running low on redstone, just about depleted on it. And that's probably the biggest reason that people make witch farms is for the redstone that you get. The sticks are going to be really nice, too. Sticks are actually in a lot of different crafting recipes. Torches, for one. I use a lot of bamboo. It'll be good for that. We can get down over here. There we go. And the other drops will be nice too. After getting this one done, it'll just be a matter of building another one over there and then getting the piping done to the middle area. And the reason I haven't started on any kind of a build in the middle here yet is because that is not going to be the level of the middle of the middle area in the AFK platform. I'm going to have to test and see the best Y level. It's probably going to be right around C level, Y level 60, to get both of these farms running at the same time. If I don't get it right at the right point as they're falling and dropping down, it'll go out of the out of the area where that mobs can spawn in and they'll actually uh, disappear before they hit the bottom. We do not want that. Looks like it's getting dark here. Let's go over and take a quick sleep. Let's see if midnight will be nice tonight and give us present. Let's see. Just about to go down over the hill there. Gonna be nice to us tonight. Give us a little something. Go out hunting. I don't know where you're gonna go hunting, but uh, we'll see. I can ask questions. Oh, and look at that. Good job, buddy. You got us a little feather. I will cherish this for all time. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and get back to work. Okay, so we are done with the roof here. Lie around so you can kind of see the finished product. I think that that dark prismarine really makes it look cool. The texture on it, it almost looks like it shingles on a roof. You saw a witch fall right there. They are starting to spawn. Whenever we're close to the farm like this, the rates are not going to be too strong. Because you have to be away from these platforms a little bit. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to position myself on one of these glass platforms over here. I'm going to load in my camera account. We can get a good look at how this farm operates. Okay, so I have my player positioned over here on a glass platform. And I have brought in my camera account. And I'm going to zoom into the farm to get a closer look and see what kind of production that we have. Okay, we can already see some falling down here. There's one right there. And there she goes. Okay, wow. So this thing is never going to be as quick or as productive as some other mob farms just because we're limited in the amount of spawning platforms and space that we can have to how big the witch hut, the bounding box of the witch hut is. That's a main reason why I am making a double witch farm here. I can up the production of what we get, but this is much better than I expected. They are spawning in fairly quickly here. I'm going to get inside the hut so you can really see what's going on. So as they spawn in, they trip the trip wires and then they fall through the floors down to the next one and then it trips it again and they fall down and they die. Looks like the farm is working perfectly. Ooh, there's a nice pack of them there. Yeah, everything looks to be going really well here. I am going to load back in my player come over here 
and see what kind of drops that we uh, that we get. I'm gonna AFK just for a little bit to let some drops build up before I come over here. Now it looks like I still need to put the glass front face on this farm. I forgot to do that. So I'm gonna do that as well. And I will be right back. I've been letting this farm run for about 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to go over to the collection area to see what kind of drops that we've collected in that time period. Continuing to fall even whenever I'm down here. I'm far enough away from the spawning platforms to load them in. But over here, this close to the corner, you can see that I am too close to the walls where mobs can spawn in the caves here. So that's why they're not really going to spawn too heavily whenever I'm over here. That AFKing in the middle area is the best spot. Oh, wow. Okay. This is, this is even better than I thought. This is really good for just 20 to 30 minutes in this farm. That's quite a bit of redstone. Gunpowder too. A little bit of everything in there. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this is going. I am going to go ahead and close up this front area with the glass to complete it. Just so, uh, just so it looks nice. It's not like they can actually fall out. But I'm going to do that. And then I will be back in just a second. I have the front glass in. And it is clear that this one chest is not going to cut it for a short-term storage solution. I'm going to go ahead and install a few more to hold the contents of this farm until we get the final storage solution installed. Like I've mentioned before, after I make this second farm over here, I am going to make a build area in the middle where the player AFKs to activate both farms at the same time. And that is where the final storage area is going to be. There's going to be a ton of chests over there, but this will do for now. And I'm actually going to call this an episode. I am super happy with how this farm has turned out. It's been a long time in the making. But my work over here is not done yet. I still have quite a bit of work to do. Still need to make a second farm. The build in the middle. I'm also planning on doing other farms in this area. This is going to be an area that I'm working on for still a number of weeks. But on the next episode... I'm planning on showing you the Wither Skeleton farm that I built a little while back. I've had some people ask where I got all of the beacons that I used in my builds and in this farm as well. So I'm going to go over there and show you that farm as well as showing you the progress that I've been making over here. But that will do it for now. I appreciate you guys watching. And if you'd hit that thumbs up button, I'd really appreciate it. Consider subscribing to see more content like this in the future. And I will see you guys in the next one.